Hi and welcome back to a new video. On my table I have plenty of CPUs, half of them are broken or like partially broken. I have a 5950X which I got for my Corsair Germany rep. There is one broken pin on the backside, I'm not sure how exactly this happened. Then I have this 5600X which I received from Hauke who is working full time for me right now for YouTube doing like scripting and stuff and research in the background. Also not sure how he managed to like break off six or seven of the pins from the CPU. Could also be that it wasn't him but he received the CPU this way, I'm not entirely sure. We will try to put back working pins on both of the AMD CPUs. And then I also received this 12900K from my Intel Germany rep who got this CPU returned from probably a reviewer or something, I'm not quite sure. But this CPU has three SMDs missing on the bottom and apparently it's not booting up. The good thing is if we manage to repair this CPU, the 12900K, we will also straight give this away in today's video. So I hope I will be able to repair the 12900K for you and also the other two AMD CPUs for the other guys. If you are looking for a great dedicated root server, Hetzner is offering this with the AX41. The AX41 is powered by AMD Ryzen desktop CPU 3600 with 6 cores, NVMe SSDs and 64GB of memory. We already visited Hetzner this year to show how these servers are built. You can find the link to this video in the description down below. And the AX41 is now also available with IPv6 only option for 34 euro per month. Feel free to check it out in the link below. Let's Let's first look at the damage. The 5600X is quite clearly damaged. Right in front there are plenty of pins missing. I think it's about 6 or 7 pins. I still have to count them. On the 5950X you can see there is a pin bent. And right here there are a few pins bent and also one pin entirely broken off. On the 12900K there is one still present in the center but right of this tiny SMD there is one part missing and left of the tiny SMD there are two parts missing. The damage on the 5600X is quite significant. We have eight pins that are broken on the bottom and one pin that is broken on the top right. All of them are kind of accessible so I think it's possible to replace them. I never tried it myself. I just want to see how this works and how easy it is to do it might also help you if you ever have this kind of problem. I hope you don't experience this but if it happens then maybe we can find out together how to yeah, easily replace them. On the 5950X we have several bend pins. There are multiple ways to bend them back. A good trick is to use, I'm not sure how this type of pencil is called, but you can like press on the back and then you have this tiny thing coming out from the, from the front. I hope we can just put an image in here. And if you find the same kind of pencil with the same kind of diameter of the pins then it's very easy to just put them on top and bend back the pin. That's a very good solution to do it. Otherwise just use a tiny tweezer, that's also what I'm using personally. That's for just bending back the pins. But the broken off pins are a bit more of an issue. We are using a donor CPU to get some working pins. You can just use any kind of like cheap AMD CPU with the same kind of socket just to make sure that the pins have the same kind of diameter, the same kind of rating, but you can find like Sempron CPUs on eBay for 5 euro. That's an old engineering sample from the first Ryzen generation which is not even working on any retail board, that's why I'm just going to sacrifice this one and use it as a donor CPU to get working pins. The 12900K in theory should be easier to repair because it's just tiny SMDs you have to replace. At the same time, and that's what we will find out under the microscope, it could also be way more difficult depending on the damage because if you rip off an SMD you could also rip off the pad which is sitting underneath and then it's getting really complicated. Me personally I don't have the skills to repair and replace the pads themselves especially on tiny PCBs like this. It's like one millimeter thick and has like eight layers. And then it's very difficult to like repad one of these tiny SMDs but yeah we will have to find out. Replacement for the SMDs is also another thing because there is no documentation online what kind of parts we're even looking at. If you just look at the four SMDs in a row, the one on the total left, that's clear because it's brown then it's a capacitor. The second from the left which is black is also pretty simple, that should be a resistor, it could also be a zero ohm resistor depending what they used. But the two components next to it which have like a blue appearance, they could be resistors or they could also in theory be inductors. And then it's getting a bit more complicated. But you never know what kind of like capacity, what kind of resistance or whatever they're using, so that's not possible to find out. What you could do is 
Well, in my position, I'm lucky because I already killed a 1200k, so I can use this as donor to have the SMDs. Otherwise, you could get a G6900. That's also what I have laying around. It's like 50, 60 euro. Compared to the price of the 1200k, could be worth to buy a CPU like this, take off the SMDs, replace it on the 12900K. That would be my go-to theory. We also want to be sure that the 12900K is really dead or not. So there's nothing on the debug LED. CPU is also not getting warm, which is typically a very bad sign. It's like no activity at all. Yeah. Seems to have some problems. 1200K is now sitting underneath the USB microscope. We first want to investigate some of the SMD components and pads. You can see one of the bluish parts still remains on there. On the total left, where usually the SMD cap is sitting, it looks kind of okay, the pad looks all right. On the left, it looks like some part of the cap is still there. But the second part from the left, you can see this kind of appears white, but we can ch change the polarization of the camera. Now it's a bit different, but you can see the entire pad is missing, which could be very complicated depending where the source of the pad is coming from. If it's just a trace going directly on the top surface to the pad, then it's usually kind of possible to repair. But I think because we can see this tiny dot on the left right here, could be that it's coming from inside of the PCB, then it's extremely difficult. Same goes for the right, but I think we have to zoom in further to see that in detail. Unfortunately, as expected, you can see that basically the entire pad is gone. The tiny round thing you can see here is the VR going inside the PCB that forms the connection to the pad. can also change the polarization again to make it a bit more clear or unclear depending on the perspective, but Definitely the entire pad is gone. I will try to use some like glass fiber pen, maybe scratch off some of the surface. Maybe I can somehow form a connection to a bit of solder. We'll try and see if we can get that working. If we move it completely over to the right, this looks um, a lot better. You can see there's still a lot of solder present on these pads. So even though they look like 50% of the pad is gone, I think that's still totally fine to be used. There's always a the question, how can we find out about the SMD parts and what kind of like capacity resistance they have? For example, I have these tiny SMD caps laying around. They're rated at 47 microfarad. And if I just try to measure this one with the normal multimeter, the multimeter will show, just takes a bit of time, about 38 microfarad. So that's a bit off compared to the 47 microfarad rating, but should be more than enough to find out what kind of part we need roughly. But now if we would try to just measure on here, then we're measuring in circuit. That could give us wrong results. And the previous measurement actually in the German video we did, it was showing 14 nanofarad and now it's only showing two. But we're measuring in circuit, which is 99% of the time just giving you wrong results because you never know what kind of parts it's attached to. So we will unsolder this and then see if we can find it out. At a certain point I ordered this, not sure what it's called, like SMD removal clamp solder whatever tip. This was originally meant for soldering shunt resistors, so it's quite a bit too big for these tiny parts, but I will still try it anyway. First step is to drown it a bit in flux. This tiny crumble thing here is the resistor we're going to measure. So it's 150 ohms. Now the capacitor, so it's a bit... Uh, maybe I would need different equipment for this, but... It's about 10 microfarad capacitor. The good thing is I even have like 10 microfarad capacitors. These are rated at 6.3 volt, could be the others are like 2.5, but that shouldn't matter much.
It's been a few hours, I will just report what I tried and what the current status of the 12900K. So first of all, I tried to kind of rescue the broken pad. Zoomed in with microscope and tried to first scratch off a little bit of the surface with the glass fiber pen. Which didn't really work out that well, so I decided to use this very sharp iFixit tweezer. And then also scratch on the surface very gently and try this for, I think it took like 15 or 20 minutes. So always scratch a, bit, a little bit, clean it up, scratch again, just check with microscope. And yeah, it took a bit of time, but you can see that the like broken pad exposed the trace which is sitting underneath, which is not a trace, but it's a via. And this via is extremely tiny. So it's 80 micrometers in diameter. Considering that a human hair is about 60 micrometers, then that's quite tiny. And it was also quite unfortunate that during the solder operations my weather tip broke for whatever reason, it's not getting detected anymore. So this is like a modular soldering iron and I have this very tiny tip and the I would call it the regular tip, which is like 1.5 millimeter, maybe two millimeters in size. So that's the one I'm using normally, but this is a bit too big. If you have a two millimeter tip for something which is 60 micrometers or like 80 micrometers, then it's a bit of a problem. Yeah, so I guess in theory it's possible to save this if you have the knowledge and like training and equipment. I'm sure you can somehow like solder back the SMD resistor on the right side and then build up a connection with a tiny wire to the via which is going through the PCB. But then you need like very fine like equipment and also the fact that the IHS is still on the CPU is making things a little bit difficult because the IHS is eating up every bit of heat you're putting into the CPU, which means that I constantly have to go back to like a heat gun, heat up the CPU to like 100 degrees Celsius, put it back under the microscope, try to solder for like a minute, go back to the heat gun, heat it up again. Can probably make it, you can probably make this easier if you have like an infrared plate where you can put on your CPU. Not sure if that would work out with my microscope, but I don't have one anyway. And at that point I just decided, okay, let's just go ahead with the easier tasks and first put back the capacitor on the left and then also the other resistor on the right. The other resistor on the right, the blue one, for whatever reason, is also 100 ohm. I also checked this one, unsoldered it from the broken 12900K, put it back on the other one. And yeah, that's the state. Soldering back those uh, resistors and caps was no problem. Maybe that's enough. Maybe this is enough to get the 1500K back to work. I think we'll just put it back into the board and try. Anyway, time to put this thing back into the socket. Maybe we don't even need the other SMD. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay. Okay, so we have a debug code, which is great. And the CPU is getting warm. The CPU is getting extremely warm. I have no idea how good this CPU can clock, if it can clock at all. So I just did some very basic settings like 5G on the P cores, 4G on the E cores. I think it's 4.9 stock on P and 3.8 on E. Also, memory is running 5200 and the cache is running at 4, so that's also slightly overclocked. And you can see it easily passes R20. Performance is also completely where it should be, almost 1100 points. So that is perfect. I also want to point out that I'm currently running off the iGPU. I already performed a test before with a 3080, just to check if 16 PCI Express lanes are present, and they're present. I didn't install the iGPU driver, but it's clearly working. The good thing is we achieved our main goal to save the 12900K, which means that you can now find a link to a Google Forms in the description, which allows you to participate in the giveaway. You only have to enter your email address and your YouTube name, and that's it. And then you can participate in the giveaway. The thing is, I wanted to also rescue one of the AMD CPUs, but then yeah, my tip broke from the soldering iron and then I also ran out to get one of these. I looked it up, it's called mechanical pencil. And the thing is the original ones or like the mechanical pens from like 10 years ago, they had some like, like sharp tip going out. And this one has some kind of like protective tip, which means that when you press on the top, it goes inside the mechanical pencil, which does not work anymore. Yeah, so I, I already ordered an old one 
which should help us to save the CPUs and should also help us soldering the pins. Okay, but you can already participate in the giveaway for the 1200K. I hope you still enjoyed this video. See you next time. Enjoy your Sunday. Bye-bye.